Jen is a television star, industry leader in health and wellness, primarily known for her big-hearted training on NBC's The Biggest Loser. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what, though, was really cool? What? Is you were like an American Gladiator, too. Yeah, I left it off the resume. Did you guys know that? That she was in, remember that show, The American Gladiator? You had to be bad A double to, to absolutely, you were, come, you come out of those things and. It was really funny. I was bartending in Chicago and I did, uh, and I, they recruited me to, to come do a Gladiator. And as a little girl, I grew up watching Zap, Nitro, everybody in the 80s. So, of course, when they asked me to do that, I, I said yes. Um, it was a riot, though. Yeah. Yeah, I very bet. small outfits, very big set, a lot of fun. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Jen is also a fitness director of Shape Magazine and featured regularly on Dr. Oz, live with Kelly and Ryan and the doctors. Mm -hmm. I always want to talk to you about the doctor thing. I'll talk about that later. Okay. Um, she also serves as a member of Shape Brain Trust and yep. is the best-selling author of Diet Right for Your Personality Type. Yep. So you can find all things Jen at Wiederstrong. Get it? Dot com. Okay. Please welcome to the stage, Jen Widerstrom. Hi, how's it going? Um, so we've got some time to, to talk and cook. I definitely want to tell you a little bit more about me. If you have no idea, does anybody have no idea who I am? This is great, you're funny. This is great. You are my favorite people to meet because um, my hope is to expand, not just only support, but education around a subject that often is very scary for people. Um, as uh, uh, Chef Paul, thank you, by the way, for the introduction, said, I'm, I'm here to cook for you today. Uh, when I did Biggest Loser, which obviously was a wild ride and a lot of fun, um, everybody wanted me to write a diet book, and I said, no, I don't really believe in diets. I believe in the personalities of who we are, the, the behavior defaults, what gets us on, keeps us on track, what sets us off. And so I wanted to write a book called Eat Right for Your Personality Type, but of course the publisher put diet on there. Uh, because apparently it sells more books than they were right. Um, but the fun part is that's a lot of why I chose today's recipe. Um, I think that we often try to fit our lives into a specific mold that has nothing to do with us. And I think once you start looking at yourself as the asset and as the information behind your success, you're actually able to schedule quite well, not only health, but life and balance and all kinds of other things. So uh, my hope is to create a little bit more fun and safety around food, that healthy can be tasty. And one of the main reasons I'm at the Wellness Festival this weekend is because of Laura's Lean. If you look right over there, that's our booth. And we are giving away that free Yeti cooler if you guess the weight of that cow. So uh, I'm hoping you lose because I'm trying to win it. But uh, be sure to enter in. And as you will see, we gave you guys, you can enter for a free gift card from Laura's Lean, $500, as well as a nice little recipe card. And this is like a little poster for, you know, next to your bed or whatever of me and a burger bake recipe. Um, but the one, uh, the reason that Laura's is one of my most favorite partners is because the founder, uh, Laura, get it? Laura's lean, Laura. She started this company over 30 years ago. And it's because she was a seventh generation farmer that got pregnant. And her doctor said, you can't do any more red meat. It's too unhealthy. You need something leaner. And she's, I, are you kidding? I'm a seventh generation farmer raising cattle. So she, before it was cool, before it looked cool on Instagram, started to produce meat in a way that it was lean, that it was healthy, that it was natural, that are vegetarian fed, never any antibiotics, never any hormones added. And again, this was over 30 years ago, 35 years this year, 35 years coming up. So it's kind of a cool thing when someone hits the trend before it's a trend, and that's what Laura did. Um, and that's what you guys deserve as consumers, really high quality meat. You'll see what the Kroger opt up app that Laura's Lean, uh, Laura's Lean ranks number one on that app. So what I'm cooking for you today is a Laura's Lean patty with a very straightforward, easy seasoning. Uh, I'm gonna take off my rings because that would be uncomfortable if one of you ate it. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone has any questions uh, for, uh, for Jen, just raise your hand and I'll run around. Any of you remember Phil Donahue? Okay, good. I'm glad some of you do. That's awesome. I think awesome we should do a show together. I do, so <laughs> let's, do it. let's do it. And I um, even wore my tennis shoes because when I was in Denver with her a couple months ago doing this, I wore my regular kitchen shoes, and we had so many questions that my feet hurt. My so I wore my tennis shoes, which also is wellness your way, right? So anyway, back to you. Amazing. All right. Um, so as I was saying, I'm going to be making a Laura's Lean beef patty. I'm also going to be giving you a veggie quinoa salad. Uh, I think that one of the number one things I hear is, how do I get meat to taste good? Well, when it's quality meat, it already does. And how do I get more vegetables in? 
I think that's the two things that people worry about most is how do I get more vegetables in and where to get quality ingredients. So I'm gonna start that, it's really easy. I've got my pan set at maybe, I don't know. These are little burner things, but if you're at home, like a medium to low heat. And the way we go about it, and by the way, if you have questions that come up, throw your hand up, Paul's got you, it's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. Do we have the overhead camera? Do you guys have screens to watch? Cool. There I am. <laughs> it was literally right over my head. I'm a little embarrassed. And I promise I, I wash my hands. So um, I'll make sure I make this available on my, on my Instagram and my Facebook tonight so you can have the full recipe. But what you're doing is you're starting with really quality beef. As I've already said, the way it's made is incredibly um, important and special. But a warning, when you have beef that is made with no antibiotics, no added hormones, it's going to cook a lot more quickly. Uh, the reason for that is think about, you guys know like bodybuilders, think about working out. When you take steroids, they swell. A lot of that swelling is water. And so the same goes for your meat. When you start to do that, you cook it off. It takes longer to cook that water and, um, and saturation of water out of the meat. So when there's no added hormones like it is with this meat, it will cook more quickly, whether it's our steaks or our patties. So don't ruin your burger because you'll be super disappointed. The way I do this, you could, these are four ounce patties. Depending on your size, shape, and goals, I like to kind of double it up. And as you'll see in the recipe, I offer salt, pepper, and some seasonings that I'm gonna talk you through right now. My biggest thing whenever you cook, layer in your salt. If you put it all in at once, you're gonna probably be disappointed because once it's in, you can't take it out. As you layer throughout your whole meal, always remember if you are trying to watch your sodium, lemon is a great substitute for salt. It creates the flavor, the same kind of sourness, the same kind of uh, enhancement of your meal without all the sodium, if that's something that you're worried about. So you can absolutely sprinkle this on and leave it as is, but I'm going to eye it here. I'm sprinkling on my salt. I'm bringing in my pepper. Now keep in mind, this is a baseline recipe. I absolutely encourage you, put other things in there that you love. So I have salt and pepper, as you can see right here. I also am offering paprika. It's gonna be a little smoky, fun, Middle Eastern spice. So I put is that, is oh. that a uh, smoked paprika or like so a So this Hungarian is standard, or... but as I was saying, okay. like smoked paprika, Yeah. Okay. it's smoky. Yeah. So you can change the flavor profile of this burger however you want. So I have regular paprika here. I've got onion powder. You could absolutely cut up some onions and throw it in, by the way. This is just the quick, hardcore way of going about it. And I also have garlic salt. You are also welcome to use actual garlic, okay? Kroger has that at their store too. So I've done it this way, and my preference is to take this, put it on top, and you can party. I like to smush it together. You can absolutely sprinkle it on and leave it. But I find that when you mix it by hand, or you can put it in a bowl and smash it by fork, no big deal. This was my favorite job as a kid. When my mother was in the kitchen, I got to smash the burgers. And part of what inspired this recipe for me is my mother is an excellent cook. She grew up with a bohemian grandmother. And every Saturday morning, she would sit and for hours learn how to cook. And it's funny, when my mother taught me, she taught me the same way my, gra my great grandmother did, right? She would, oh, some of this, a little salt, some here, this and that. And it was funny because my mother became actually such a great cook that it actually kept me from cooking for a while. I was very intimidated. I thought, my chicken will never taste like her chicken. I'll always, I mean, I tried to roast one chicken and it was undercooked. That was an interesting dinner. <laughs> I poured more wine, right? So. What I like about this is it's very simple, straightforward ingredients with quality food. And that's how I started to learn to cook. I think it's always intimidating, especially when you start to build a family, like, oh my God, they're all gonna have to eat this. <laughs> this really started to help me. So hold on, let me get, I got beautiful white cabinets here, little towel. So what I've got going on now, are we following so far? Good meat, good ingredients, mashing in. As I said, feel free to be curious. Put in some diced jalapenos, put in some diced um, peppers, onions. Uh, you can use smoked paprika. Uh, Chef, anything else that you would have personally added to your burger? 
Well, I think the onion thing is good. I also like shiitake mushrooms. Ooh. Okay, take some shiitake mushrooms and saute those up first. Let them cool down and then dice them and put them in there. And you get a little bit of that woody, smoky uh, flavor that goes in there as well. And so um, I kind of like that a lot, So too. cook them first, so, then put them in. Yeah, cook them. So you put them in cooked. Yeah, cook them, cool them, and put them, put them why, in Why first, shiitake so. over a, diff a different one? Yeah, so I like shiitake mushrooms because I like that earthy little smoky flavor that it gives more than just the traditional button mushroom. So I just, I just like them. I mean, I think they add, they add a little bit more. Literally I the perfect like response. Why? Because right. he likes them. Put like in them. your food what you like, because then you will eat it. A lot of times people get stuck on a wellness journey because they're doing a recipe that like, oh, I hate shiitake mushrooms, but chef said to put them in. Leave them out, put in jalapenos, put in a little cheddar cheese. Whatever gets you to eat more good food, I'm all about. I call it yum yum. Make it work for you. Yeah. All right, let's get this going. That's why uh, we call it wellness your way, right? Oh, uh-huh. Very there, sneaky. There go. So I'm a preference. Uh, I have a preference towards using a bit of a spray. Sometimes oil or butter, a lot more comes out than you think is coming out under your platter. So I like to do it this way to save on some calories and keep the flavor where it belongs. So I've got my burgers in. Uh, let's see, Sarah, your front row. Will you give me, is that a timer for me? Do you have a watch? So basically the rule of thumb when it comes to burgers is you wanna cook about five to seven minutes for every inch of the burger. So these burgers look about an inch and a half thick. I'll probably go three, check in on me in three minutes, maybe four minutes, four minutes, and then we'll flip them over. Because the worst thing is overcooking your burger or your steak, right? Okay. This part's easy and done with. I'm going to wrap this up and move it. Any questions so far from anyone? Yeah, pretty straightforward, right? All right. Stepping over, we've got our veggie quinoa salad. Now, I like to use a quinoa base. It's a blast. I remember my roommate in college said it reminded her of carpet. I promise you it's not that bad. Uh, the way the ingredients I've combined in here make it a lot more fun. Another fun fact, with, with your grain, choose grains that actually, um, that are diverse. And what I mean by that is in quinoa, you've got protein and you've got fiber, right? You kind of just need to sneak health into your food so you don't have to think about it that hard. An uh, interesting statistic are most Americans are only getting about 15 grams of fiber in on a daily basis. Whereas women need about 25 to 30 grams, men need about 35 to 40 grams. So if we're hitting only about a half or a third of the fiber we need, it gets in the way of our weight loss, feeling satiated, digestion. So quinoa is a great resource. You can only order, um, barley is another great resource. You can do one cup of barley. Can anybody guess how many grams of fiber are in one cup of barley? This could be a fun giveaway book thing. I'm listening. Huh? 23, it's higher. Wait, what did I hear? I heard 25 over here. Higher. She says 40, lower than 40, Trish. Oh, he got it. 35. Thank <laughs> 35. you. I'll give you both a book. Don't worry. 35 grams of fiber in a one cup of barley. Think about that. You can have a little barley in your day and you'll be ready to rock. So getting focused with my quinoa salad. All right. Quinoa or barley. You got about a quarter cup of diced cherry tomatoes. If you want more, have more. These are great for you, okay? Diced red onion. Pop it in there. All the measurements I'll make sure I include. If you hate diced red onion, leave it out. <laughs> exactly. Diced cucumber, I love this. Guys, uh, great for digestion. My chef uh, actually peeled them I like to leave the peels on, it's extra fiber, up to you. But there you go, diced cucumber. And this is a nice little secret ingredient, mint. Fresh mint that you slice up, okay? Literally, the prep time is probably the longest, just to cut some things up. But this salad is completely ready, right now. You dump it all in, it's ready to go. Dressing it, Sarah, how am I on time? I'm at I'm at 111 left. Oh God, okay. I was like, you started that clock late. I've been talking for way more than a minute and 11 seconds. All right. So what I love about this is if you have somebody in your family that's vegetarian or even they're struggling to get their vegetables in, it's a great dish. 
I know Laura's Lean has just come out with a vegetarian patty that'll be at your Kroger store, so that's really fun. But it's a great way to diversify your menu in your kitchen at home. So I'm gonna pause here a second. These are looking great. And by the way, you can absolutely do these steaks on the grill, save yourself the, the kitchen cleanup. It's also really great. So the dressing for this is also very straightforward. We've got red wine vinegar. We've got lemon juice, coming back to that flavor profile. So instead of salting this, we'll actually just use the lemon juice for some of that fray flavor, as well as the bitterness and the red wine vinegar. And then olive oil. There's nothing like olive oil to coat and create a richness with your, with your food. Uh, keep in mind, there are different olive oils on the market that are gonna be a little bit more tasty. There are olive oils out there on shelves for cooking, but if you spend a little bit more money, you can actually find one that's a, like a table olive oil for dipping your bread in, that's for, putting, for dressing your salads, and you'll have a richer flavor profile here. Turn the burger, thank you. All right, we're gonna pause here, just a second. We're turning the burger. Now, if you guys kind of take a look, these burgers are pretty thick. I'm only about part way through, but I'm kind of happy about that because remember, you can always put the burger back on if it's not cooked enough. If it's cooked through, you're screwed. <laughs> That's my professional cooking term. <laughs> so I like to do it, give it a little smash. I personally love that charring on my burger. And we're gonna keep this rolling, okay. Do another, that was four. Let's do three. The thought of overcooking it would kill me. Okay, so how are we doing? Any questions so far? This is kind of making sense. Any questions? We're growing a crowd. One. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, absolutely. Oh, what was it? She's asking that? for the recipe for this. Oh, okay. Recipe. So I'll make sure I post it on my Instagram and my Facebook page. Are you on either of those? You're not. I'll make, you know what, and I'll have my book open here. You can take a picture of the recipe in the book as well. That's an easy way to do it. So as you kind of look from the camera above, you want it swirled. You can absolutely whisk this. I'm not that fancy. This does it plenty. What you want to see is the separate, the lack of separation with the oil and the other ingredients. You want to make sure it's really combined. The other big component here that I want you to think about is do not use it all. There's nothing worse than putting it all onto your salad and then having too much on there that you can't take off. Another great idea is you can actually, actually dress per serving. I live alone with my bulldog. So if I dressed all of this and put it in my refrigerator, it would actually get a little soggy. So keep it fresh just like this and per serving, you can actually dress as you go. Actually, you know, um, do I have a couple serving plates? Two would be great, thank you. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna mix it, and I'm gonna kinda just gently let it splash. I'm doing maybe half. Thank you, Tyler. That was maybe half. And if you look from above, you can already see there's a nice gentle shininess to everything we're eating. If you are someone that's struggling with a, a sweet tooth and is really not into this, sub the onions out for apples. It's a really fun idea, right? Apples, I, I, I would prefer fresh fruit versus dried fruit because you get a lot of more bang for your buck and a lot less sugar. But apples are a great element when I put a salad together. A big rule in the kitchen is always taste it before you serve it. Okay, so for my liking, this is plenty of dressing. You have more that you can use We've got spinach still coming. We're going on here. Oh, these are great serving plates, thank you. All right, so let's have a conversation about vegetables. Is anybody struggling to get them in? Yeah, why do you think? I wanna to talk to my new guys, I have no idea who I am, yeah. Why is it hard to get vegetables in? Oh, why? Just, I, just a struggle every day. I, fast foods out there. Like you don't want to taste them? No. You don't know how to cook them? You're like, ugh. Yeah. Anybody else? Is that kind of the similar response? Just kind of over it? So a lot of, it's funny, think about kids. I'm not a parent yet, but I have a lot of nieces and nephews. It's like sneaking food uh, and vegetables into your kids' meals without them knowing it. You kind of got to do the same for the adults. We never outgrow that need, and that's okay. Two ways, burger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. burger. 
Okay. Burger time, burger time. So here we go. This is technically a chef no-no, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna cut this one in half so you can see the burger. Okay, so, oh. Okay, I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> we'll look at the good side. If you are a rare burger person, this is for you, right? This is totally there, the outside's crisp, the inside's raw. For me, I'm more of a medium. So this was four minutes each side. You did a four and a three. Okay, so that was, I was pretty close then, so I probably should have gone like another minute. Maybe this is your fault. Didn't I say four minutes? <laughs> I don't remember what I said. <laughs> okay, so what we've got is check that. Like whenever you, hello, see the reflexes? <laughs> I do fitness in the kitchen right here. So the key is make sure you check before you think it's done. You don't want to cut it all the way open. I've talked about that with Chef before. Right. It actually lots a lot of the, the juiciness, the tenderness of the meat spill out. I'm doing to just kind of show you. But keep that in mind. I'm going to let this keep going then. I would say 60 more seconds as I plate this. So spinach, two ways to get your spinach in. You can absolutely leave it on the bottom of your plate. Oh, oh, I did it backwards. Don't look. Hold on. I'll do this in a second. Okay. Keep, keep that. I just need a knife. Yes. So it's like sneaking vegetables to your kids, right? Level one, you roll up that spinach and you just cut it really small. The smaller, the better, because then you won't notice it. <laughs> I throw spinach in steaks, uh, shakes. I throw spinach in tortillas with a little cheese and I crush it. <laughs> this is how I get my spinach in. So what's fun is we chop up that spinach, then you go ahead and mix it in to your yummy starch, right? You can do this with your tuna salad. You can do this with your egg salad. Anything you need to, sneak those guys in. I promise you, you barely notice it. Uh, I'm getting a little messy, but that's okay. I promise good food, not clean, like non-messy food. Check the burger. Check the burger. <laughs> Whew. Whew. Okay, this is perfect. So now, I'm gonna leave this out so you guys can taste it. So does that interest you? I've got like a medium, okay, this one's coming off. This one's pretty much here. I'll, I'll cut this up for you. Burner, can I turn this burner off, Tyler? Okay. My other guy, this is great. So look at both sides, beautifully charred. And you guys know how to check if your burger's the way you want it yet? This was taught to me, I think, like home ec when I was 12 years old. So you're welcome. Um, when you bring your finger down and the tissue in your skin's pretty soft, that's how you know it's medium. This is medium well, this is well done. So the tension, the weight, I know you're testing it. So what, it's harder. So that's how you know to sniff this. This feels like a medium burger. That's exactly what I want. Did you try it, Chef? Perfect. Uh, absolutely. That's do, would what we you, do. Would you would you back up my technique? Yes. Yes. Great. It's a great technique. Yep. This little Thank part you, of your, Mrs. Reschke, your right? hand right there. So. Okay. So this is my other way of getting around this. So there's two ways you can butterfly your burger or your steak. We've got our side salad here. Now, I know it's prettier to put your lettuce underneath your burger, but I'm afraid you're gonna use it like a tablecloth and just eat on top of it and not use it. So when it comes to your burgers, I put it right on top. So I have to eat through it to get to the burger. There you go. Right? It sounds so silly, but it's a lot of fun. And I can just cut right into it. So in every bite of my burger, I'm getting some of the spinach in. You can do this with kale, you can do this with anything you want. I particularly love doing like a ribeye steak which we've got plenty with Laura's. I put arugula on there, a little olive oil, and I have to eat through the greens to get to the meat, right? Okay, so this is what I've got for you. Uh, you guys have been very attentive audience. Any other okay. questions that are coming through for you? Any questions? Oh, I got a question coming at you. Do we have questions? Okay, good, good, good. Hi, Jen. Hi. Can you break down or explain the different personality types out of your book? Just highlight oh. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Trish is interested about the breakdown of the books, uh, the identity types in my book. So as I said, 
in all my years of coaching and working with people, I identified if I coach the person, I'll, feel, I'll find success. I can't make them change who they are to fit a certain program. So I have five key personality types. There's a quiz in here that helps you identify who you are, those behavior defaults I told you about, what are those potholes that continue to come up in your day. There's five. One is an organized doer. These are people that love checklists, that love organization, that thrive in that setting, that if they go to a class, they're probably very competitive. They're also going to see success probably the soonest because they're so driven. They are also going to be the hardest on themselves because they don't accept a lot of their own success and don't celebrate it. So these are the people that actually thrive and then tend to quit, okay? Then I've got an everyday hero, that's me. Our excuse for not being healthy is all of you, right? I'm so busy with helping everybody else in my life. And by the way, it's done with love, it's done with real concern, it's done with genuine uh, care. But then we become last on every, our list. So we're the last one to eat, we'll go, is this, are you rolling, is this you? Oh, I'm a, I'm a hybrid. I'm an everyday hero with a, with a recessive everyday, um, I mean, organized doer. So we'll talk, yeah. Um, I often find this in mothers and parents, police officers, nurses. They'll go all day, all, all hours, not feed themselves, not get enough sleep, because they're always thinking of somebody else first. It's a wonderful quality, but it is detrimental and can be to your health. Uh, and a fun tip, if that's you, schedule. So if you schedule a personal trainer, if you schedule a workout session with somebody, you'll show up and you'll happen to work out, but you're not gonna let that person down by not showing up. So it's a nice way to kind of backdoor your brain. Uh, next I have a rebel. These, this is like my best friend. She's the person that would literally blow dry her hair out the window and be completely satisfied for it. There's no organization, bless you by the way. She'll open her fridge and just randomly put things together. But because of their freeness, and their openness and their fluidness, which are wonderful qualities I'm trying to work on personally because I'm a bit of a rigid personality. Uh, they tend to not pay attention to portion, uh, what they're eating, the combinations of what they're eating, when they're eating, anything. So for them, I like to kind of let them go bumper bowling, you know, let them kind of do whatever they want, but they're gonna stay within these light parameters of the bumpers down the lane. Finally, we've got a swinger, not that kind of swinger, and I've got a never ever. Swingers are people that need variety. They're probably the perfect people that are organizing your brunches, trying out new places to shop, eat, work out, but they're constantly changing, changing, changing because they need that variety and they thrive in it, but therefore they don't really hang on to anything too long and therefore they tend to find a struggle in finding results and they often blame themselves like, oh, it must be me versus seeing that it's just they're jumping around. And then never ever are the people that are really stuck. They're not quite sure what they're doing it for anymore and that program is based on baseline health, showing them that they're much more capable than they think they are, and it's a program building out that. So there's literally five whole programs in my book. Thank you for that question. Jen, I have a question for you. Yeah. So you travel a lot, and you're on the go, and you do all these different things. Like, do you have like a morning regimen that like jumpstarts your metabolism, or like I, I drink that vinegar thing, which some people say you shouldn't, and all that kind of stuff, but do you have like something that to get your metabolism going and, and get your day going, it's a kind of a routine that you don't miss. Yeah, especially whether at home or on the road, I have found that, um, I was being really picky with the people I was working with. I'm like, are you really getting enough water in? Are you really getting that many hours of sleep in? So it took a couple days to track it. I tracked my water, I tracked my sleep, I tracked how many days a week I was drinking alcohol. I was getting in far more alcohol and far less water. I just, I just wasn't thinking about it. And so when I brought a conscious thoughtfulness around what I was doing, I actually got to insert active um, takeaways to that behavior. So when I get up, I'm crushing water. I brush my teeth and I get water in right away. 35% of your water should happen very early in the morning. And most people don't want it, but it's because we're ending with so little throughout the day that we're actually kind of reserving our stores. We're, we're kind of holding on the water. And when you do that, uh, one of water's main responsibilities is regulating your body's body temperature. So, and I'm not just talking sweating, but your entire system. So when you're not giving yourself enough water, your body will literally start to hoard fat. Because it's like, if you're, I'm not doing it for me, my body's gonna take care of me. So I realized, oh my goodness, my metabolism will go up, my digestion will improve, I will feel better across the board. 
And a lot of times as we get cravings midday, we don't know why, we're like, oh, I'm just such a sugar person. Nine times out of 10, you're probably just thirsty. Hi again, I can't get rid of you. Hi. <laughs> she's in my plane, she's at my hotel. I'm, I think I'm stalking her. Um, oh, she's stalking me, either way. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I do water right away. I always do some sort of collagen or green smoothie right away. It helps me because I get very lazy as the day goes on with doing this stuff, so I put it in early. Tons of greens, quality protein, maybe berries or quality fat, maybe chia seeds. But I find when I make that effort early, my whole day is better. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? We have a question right here. And yeah, I, and you'll... I have a question on breakfast choices. Oh yeah. I think, I think your, your, your hint about um, how much water you take in the, in, in the first thing in the morning, yeah. I got a bottle about this big oh, that good. I put into me. And that, I think that's one of the best things you can do. But I have a question on, um, like I'm a cereal guy. Yeah. And, and some people poo poo cereal. And some don't. I mean, is it is it just a matter of looking at the sugar content or are there other things yeah. you can pay attention to? It's just not enough bang for your buck. When you look at most cereals, they're not giving you the amount of quality starch or quality fiber you, or protein you would need for the amount of sugar you're getting to offset it. So what I like to say is keep your cereal. Uh, I don't care if you're if it's Fruit Loops or like Quaker Oats squares, whatever you're doing, and take two thirds of that and do that, and then take one third of raw oats. Get the quick oats that are small and mix it in. You'll be shocked at how much more sustained you feel. Um, your blood sugar won't crash. You'll still get your yum yum in the cereal, but you'll also get that oatmeal in that I need you to get. Okay, I'd also um, milk, a lot of sugar in milk. I would rather have you do an almond milk, an unsweetened almond milk. There's other choices as well, but that's my go-to. I just don't want that massive sugar spike in your morning. And also tip, look at the portion size on the box. They say what the, what the nutrition facts are, but often the one serving of only six grams of sugar is like a quarter cup. Measure out how much cereal is going in your bowl. I bet you'd be shocked. It's probably not the quarter cup. It's probably eight times that. At least when I go, and I always go back for seconds. So keep that in mind. I got another question for you. Yeah, and then we'll come to you. Yep. Hi, Jen. Do you have smoothie pick-me-ups in your book? Say that one more time. Smoothie, pick me ups, like oh, the Oh, smoothies, day. oh yeah. I, I call it, uh, for the everyday hero, I have a snack stash, but I've got smoothies throughout the entire book as well. And by the way, I'm gonna be at Laura's Lean right after this. Feel free to come by. I'll give you guys a book. We've got plenty, I can sign it. It's all yours. Yeah. Okay. Now she was gonna. I was just gonna ask you if we could buy your book so oh, we could sign it. <laughs> we are giving them away, all thanks to Laura's Lean. So I'm gonna actually, once I wrap up here, I'll be right over there. Guess how big the cow is? I'll just give you one of the books so you'll have the recipe. But there you go. There you go. Um, on your Laura's Lean Beef, what is the percentage of fat to lean? I don't know if you mentioned that earlier. Yeah, or I, yeah, I yeah. It. So these patties, so we've got a 96% lean, we've got a 92% lean. I like the 92, I like a little fat, I like that flavor. You don't have to, you don't have to go 99% free lean if you don't want to. And I'm gonna leave these up here for you guys to taste if you'd like with little forks. If you wanna okay. come try it, please do. All right, let's hear it for Jen Wiederstrom, everybody. Woo!